Well, welcome every one of you to this gathering. Your spiritual journey is about to get ramped up. That's what we're here for. Do you realize that the Unity teachings have real answers to real questions about life, the nature of love, meaning and purpose, the truth of being? These answers are open-ended, they are practical, and they're inclusive. And so, I light this candle to represent the light of life, the light of truth, and the light of being. I light this candle for the awakening of the heart in all people. I light this candle for freedom from fear, freedom from domination. I light this candle for the power of love to transform any condition into order, harmony, and peace. I light this candle for the coming of heaven, heaven on earth. So today's topic, dancing with chaos, you know, this is the one skill that we need for the paradigm shift that we're in. Because the old, the old structures, the old institutions are just collapsing on us. And we find ourselves facing a void, a chaos, a, a re redesigning of our very foundations of culture and civilization. So I think that all of the content and material in this book was worth studying just to get us to arriving at this point. We are all thrown into chaos at some point in our lives. How many feel they have experienced this, being thrown into chaos? There's so much to say about our relationship with this chaos. First, what is it? What do we mean by the notion of chaos? Well, what we mean in this sense of living originally is referring to the Greek myths, the creation myth, where chaos is the great void. And out of this void emerges Gaia, the goddess of Earth. And so all creation emerges, according to the Greek myth, from chaos, or what we call chaos. Now, the primordial state out of which everything arises then is what we're looking at, is what we mean. And that is such a spiritual notion, is it not? The void, the still point, the silence, the nothing. But now think about the chaos theory in mathematics and physics, okay? This is, this is, this is uh, taking a big leap, okay, I'm just, Bear with me. In chaos theory of physics and math, the presence of what is called an attractor is what causes an orderly manifestation out of the chaos. Think of it, it's the same with consciousness itself. An attractor is the organizing principle at the level of cause. Very God itself can be considered at the attractor of the entire cosmos, but we create the attractor in consciousness. You and I are creating this attractor, which is a divine idea. We are co-creators in the deepest sense. Just take a moment now to realize and internalize this idea. Now, an attractor as a divine idea is love, is beauty, wisdom, healing, harmony, unity, intention itself. The possibilities are infinite. And our response to chaos is to find the point of absolute stillness and then surrender to that still point. 
It is a very spiritually adept skill. It requires the application of all the practices, the base practices, self-awareness, self-acceptance, forgiveness, benevolence, and skillful and nonviolent communication. What keeps us from dancing with chaos is our false identification with self. Or simply put, what? Ego. That's what keeps us. Now take a moment to think about death. You see, the chapter following Dancing with Chaos is Death is My Advisor. It follows right on the heels because death is the ultimate chaos, is it not? Our attitude toward death is a good indicator of what work we need to do to live, ori to live originally. Now he describes, whew, he describes in, in his chapter on Death is my, my Advisor, he describes belonging to a group that was doing an experimental study uh, based on, what is it, based on um, a work, uh, you know, they were basing it on a book that they were working with, and they met to, uh, to practice, to exercise this book, and it was called, the book's called um, A Year to Live by Stephen Levine. How many of you know this work? So in this group of people, they set a date in which they were going to live as if they knew they were going to die on that date a year from then. And then they, um, they discussed what priorities did that make them aware of. And there, were, uh, there, were some, there was a list of issues that they, that they dealt with. Uh, death, your own transition, and what, it's, I mean, it's not morbid, it actually brings you more alive, he says. What do I fear most about dying? What is important for me to finish before I die? What legacy do I want to leave to humanity? And what do I want shared in my eulogy, in my epitaph, my obituary? This was something we did do in ministerial school, write our, write our own obituary. It just brings you to the awareness of what's important. And one of the things that he cites too in this chapter on, on Death is My Advisor is the teachings of Don Juan. How many of you are familiar with the Carlos Castaneda's work, A Journey to Ixlan, uh, A Separate Reality, and this is from the teachings of Don Juan, where he says, whenever you feel like you're facing annihilation, just turn to death, which is always at your left shoulder, and say, is this really important? Does this really matter? And death will always tell you, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So these special practices that we're, that we're going over last week was everything is my teacher. Today is really dancing with chaos with a little bit of death is my advisor as the shadow of that. These are special practices. They are not something like the basic practices that you always do. You don't always have... Uh, these, these practices, but you do always practice the deep self-acceptance and the radical self-awareness. But these practices, special practices, are like a lens to try on and live, live out of for, say, at least a month, he says, and derive a certain expanded awareness from these special practices. So the dancing with chaos is really to be free to encounter any condition and create in freedom, create in partnership with the allness of absolute good. The allness of absolute good, or simply put, God, God, create with the divine. Now, let's think a moment about, about dancing. You know, I gave a sermon at this Coptic Center called Dancing with the Divine, and it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. It's not like a sermon I would give here. It's just a story. But it perfectly fits what's required of us 
to Dance with Chaos. So if you want to take a look at that, it's kind of fun to watch, I think. But now think about dancing from the standpoint of the divine masculine archetype. Matthew Fox, many of you know Matthew Fox, he's the leading uh, theologian in the world. He's considered to be the greatest theologian at the moment. He is a defrocked Catholic priest. He gave a sermon on the divine masculine in, on Father's Day, which I was privileged to hear. And he tells about how the indigenous people of North America will not allow a young man to be a warrior until he has first learned to dance. They say that a human should not be able to take the life of another without having experienced the feeling of dancing. What does this tell us? To dance is divine. It is creative. It is all enveloping. It is medicine. And it is very proper use of the ego. Now I'm not talking here about dancing with your feet, but dancing with your entire being, with your intuition, with your creativity, with your heart, with your whole body, with your entire being. Now we actually have two attractors here in this discussion. We have the surrender to chaos when things are in transition and the creation of spontaneous activity that, can, that rides on what we can only call the activity of spirit. To dance and create that spontaneous activity that rides on the activity of spirit, we have to be sensitized, we have to be weightless, we have to be able to follow, as if in a dance, the lead of unseen forces for good. It's a marvelous way <laughs> to move through life, lightly and creatively. So now, in these times of collapse of the old and a void where we find the space to create a new dance, where we find the space now to create a new world, let us be established on a firm foundation of spiritual truth. That we are co-creators with the divine. That the only thing that stops us is fear. That there's an infinite source of good pouring forth. And as we choose to cease the fear-based, power-addicted consciousness of the egoic self, as we choose to find the still point, our interface with the superconscious mind, that still point. We unleash grace upon grace, healing it, us body and mind, and restoring our souls. Let me just say that again, it's so, it's so powerful. As we choose to cease the fear-based power addicted consciousness, as we choose to find the still point, which is our interface with superconscious mind, we unleash grace upon grace, healing us body and mind, and restoring our souls. And we find this echoed in the 23rd Psalm. It's so surprising. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. And so let us prepare for our time of meditation in the silence. Taking deep breaths, relaxing from head to toe and from toe to head throughout every energetic influence within us we align with peace we align with wisdom and we open to the light 
Our statement for meditation is, in stillness, I find communion with the divine. And so let us vocalize that now together. In stillness, I find communion with the divine. And silently know this in your heart. For this stillness we carry with us perpetually. This light shines within us eternally. And we are forever the Christ. We are forever blessed. And we know this now as we wait in the silence of peace. And we know that this is our destiny. This is our truth. To be that light. To be the Christ. This is who we truly, truly are. We give thanks and know. And so it is. Amen. Amen.